this is uh, Koiru with uh, another uh, video. Uh, even though we have left behind us the month of December, I still have some dos topics left. And today we are going to look at a feature that ended back in uh, the early dos days. And that is the MS-DOS manuals that was part of every MS-DOS computer back in the day. As you can see, this book states Philips MS-DOS 401. And this book belonged to my Philips LTP3230 that was featured in the lineup video. And this book is a very good example of what was back in the day. Microsoft also supplied their own books uh, with just MS-DOS markings that was used for the smaller OEMs that just bought their OEM uh, DOS uh, and didn't have the resource to, to rebrand them. But this is actually called the Philips Slim version and this book is fairly typical for what uh, was delivered back in the day and as this book uh, is not the newest ones it's uh, for DOS 401 uh, I also have books for Commodore that's for DOS 3.3 and I also have some MS-DOS books that's uh, from DOS 5 uh, I think and I also have some other books that from back in the day and even though this is uh, just the thin version of the book it's quite comprehensive when it comes to what's discussed within and they start about learning MS-DOS learning about disks getting started and uh, using commands and they have a short review of some of the commands using applications uh, with MS-DOS uh, which it's really is all about and there are some issues about setting up uh, some about files and directories about commands and then it has a comprehensive list of all the MS-DOS uh, commands uh, listed down here they go into the uh, team of, of batch processing and making your own batch files and the logic within batch files to have tests to have go to's and so on and, and also file handling uh, within batch they go on to say about about MS DOS editing and function keys and you have to remember this book is about DOS 4.1 and then they had Edlin as the DOS editor and this is a line based editor it's not a screen editor like the, the edit program that was contained from MS-DOS 5 and so on and also other versions of MS-DOS was bundled with other editors but the standard version from Microsoft used the Edlin and this is quite the ugly stuff but it's it's comprehensive guide is about that and also this is DOS 501 as I said and in that version of DOS they had this user shell that was this uh, where you can use your mice to um, to click commands and so on and you can also have this as a startup on the computer and start your programs from there this was not a very good user interface but it's quite a big part of what's discussed in this book you can see the shell starts here and it goes through all the way to the end here before the appendixes and also in the end of the book is a very small part about GV basic uh, that was the basic that was bundled with all the machines that was not IBM or had other brands of basic this is just a short list of the command it's not a comprehensive guide but that was also something that you can get back in the day but this part about learning MS-DOS is quite comprehensive and it goes to into some degree to explain to you what the directory is what the volume label is different type of disk drives the common interpreter device and device names error messengers and it also explains the difference about expanded and extended uh, memory and base memory and that's 
I don't see how the regular user really should be able to, to grasp these concepts, but even though they tried. And it also is quite comprehensive when it comes to the file system, to floppy disk, the write protection schemes, uh, the difference between three and a half inch drives and floppy drives, hard disks, formatting your disk, how to name your files, they go into the whole eight character uh, plus three character file ending scheme that's that MS-DOS was uh, riddled with back in the day. And they also list ops what's the valid uh, character. And they also start with install MS-DOS with the select program. Prior to DOS, DOS 5, uh, it was another way of setting up DOS. In version 5 and version 6 of Windows, you had to set the program. Here is the select uh, program. And also back with DOS uh, 4, you had to use some disks. Even though you was going to install this on a hard drive, you had to have a disk ready. Because the setup file, when you use the select command, the select command wrote this back to a disk. So you had to have an empty disk to install MS-DOS on your computer, even though you had a hard drive. Here it goes into detail in describing uh, the select program. And it also here goes to an overview of the DOS shell but obviously they come more back to uh, that later. And the importance to make a backup of your MS-DOS disk. And then it goes into using commands. And back in the day when you didn't have Windows to help you out, you actually had to have a basic overview of the different commands and how they was going to be used. And it was also valuable to know what commands was embedded in the command com uh, command interpreter and what was separate files because everything that was embedded in the um, command com file you can run straight away otherwise you had to use a disk and if you had a single disk computer or you have a dual disk computer you actually have to know that these command files was something you had to bring with you here they go on to how to create a file with the Edlin command. It also explains to you the details of the config sys and the autoexec bat file and the commands that should be uh, provided within these files. And this is just a short summary. They go more in depth in this later on. Part 2, user reference. So now they're going to go a bit further and have more in-depth explanations of the various topics. How MS-DOS keeps track of your files? They actually explain the file allocation table that's the, the main characteristics of the FAT file system. They explain about file protections and the attributes. They also explain about multi-level directories, that's subdirectories. Path and path names, how you should navigate uh, in subdirectories. And they're going to explain to you the wildcards uh, for having commands work on uh, many files at a time. How to change directory, how to make directories, and how to delete directories. Quite comprehensive. And now they tell you about the command com and what's, what commands that's embedded in the command file. And they also tell you what commands is not in uh, the file. Then it goes on to quite some advanced uh, topics about redirecting input. And they also, after they have the brief summary, they start with a comprehensive walkthrough of all the DOS commands that actually is built within 4.1. And they start this alphabetically. Uh, with append, assign, attrib, backup, break, change code page, change directory, check disk. Ah, I still have some bad memories about the check disk uh, command, but it was not as bad as scan disk. Scan disk, I don't think any other program has lost so many files for me as scan disk. It also gave all the switches for each of, of the command. 
and remember though this is those 5.1 so many of the switches that was in the later versions of ms dos 5 and 6 the reason they're not described here is because they actually wasn't part of, of those four uh, and they also describe both the internal commands uh, that was part of, of uh, command com and the external commands as this copy. They also have detailed setup uh, about how you should set up. You had a change code page command listed earlier, but you had a kib command. And here in Norway, we used the kib no and the code page 865 or code page 850 as listed here. And also they have quite a comprehensive explanation of the mode command. The mode switch is actually a, a multi-headed beast as you can use it to set all kind of redirections on serial port, parallel ports and other devices. And you used it back in the day to set up modems, to set up printers, and you can also redirect output uh, so that things that goes to the serial port goes to the parallel port and, and vice versa. And it even controlled the display mode. So you could use mode switch to set mono 40 or 80. Uh, you can set keyboard mode, specify here as the typematic int interval time. So the reputation of keys set the code page for devices redirect printing as i said so the mode command was quite comprehensive also explains how you should customize your prompt rename replace restore is actually the opposite of the backup command uh, you can actually back up your hard drive to to floppy disk the subst command that was actually something back in the day when you can associate a path with a drive letter. This was how we, back in the school days, when we should install things to work on a network, we actually tested this with the subst command first. Then you just took a, a drive a path here and you subst that for the F drive. And then you configured all your software to run from F. And when you was finished with that, you can just take the F and copy everything out on the network drive and everything was was working out of the box that was also the um, opposite function when you was going to maybe um, steal some pr f software from your server and run them just on your personal workbench you copy them to a path and you use the subst command to have this running and the xcopy command that's a command that's in later version expanded with much more switches. Back in the day when Windows 95, when we was going to copy a full install of Windows 95 from one computer to another, I used the xcopy. You had to remember to copy both attributes and system files, hidden files, empty directories, subdirectories, and so on. And now it comes to batch processing. And a batch program is, as you probably know, just a list of those commands and other files that you can run off MS-DOS, where you also can have test structures and variables and keyboard input and read status from files and so on. And they actually here explain how to make the batch file, how to use variables and how to do tests within a file how to use the call parameter to call external programs the if statement the go to statement the for statement the pause that was used to wait for something so this is quite a comprehensive guide for writing this and this is just almost everything in this chapter is about using headline and the headline command I really don't think much of it. It's possible to use it to fix some files, but it's probably one of the most user-unfriendly programs that I've ever seen.
And this is something that you didn't see in use every day because this is instructions for uses with single floppy disk drive system. And when those four was around, there really wasn't that many systems that only used a single floppy disk. Every DOS version since 2.0 something has had support for hard drives built in from the start. So I'm not sure if there actually was many users that used DOS 4 on anything that had a single floppy. And I know for certain that the last version of DOS I had when I was running this on a single floppy drive, as actually was the case with my old brand new laptop, was the version 3.2 and 3.3. Yes, and here's, here is how to set up the configuration files, the configsys commands, all the commands in, in the configsys files, and everything is actually listed quite comprehensive here. And also how you set up this country. We mentioned the kibnu and mode commands that you used for this in the auto exec bot files. But this has to be prepared with the country programs in the configsys file. So you have to set this country to, to 047 and 865, 850 code page in configsys to make this work. And even though it was other programs that you could use instead of the Microsoft language setup, as uh, you had this Norwegian program Abatast, among others, that took less conventional memory and did the same functions. The MS-DOS functions for doing this was late in the day really good. Yes, and you can also overrun some of the settings from the BIOS for your drives and set up the drive parameters. This is what your shell should be. If you have some other shell than command com, you change this here. And a comprehensive guide of how you use FDisk. I won't go into to detail about this, but FDisk was a program that was largely unchanged from version 3 and onwards to, to version 6. It only supported more different types of partitions. You have this to set the active partition. I don't know how many times I forgot this and rebooted the machine and installed those and had no active partition set. This active is the partition that the MBR looks for for actually try to boot the computer. This DOS message directory. Oh, the shell users guide. Everything that's in here is about that MS DOS uh, shell that's the add-on program that was quite a thing with those four but i don't think ever i saw anyone using it and this is a, a large part of the book and here are some uh, settings about uh, changing the settings in the dos shell not very much uh, to look at And in the end of this book, we have the Geva Basic uh, run-up. And even though this is not meant to be a guide about uh, Geva Basic, it actually have a complete guide of all the commands that was standard in the regular GV Basic. And as you know, GV Basic was the basic that was supplied as a file in Microsoft's versions of MS-DOS where or the, the versions from IBM contain their own basic. And in the end of the books, we have this comprehensive overview and an explanation of all the terms that's discussed in this book. And in the back of the book, you have the index. So that was a short walkthrough of what actually was within uh, these books back in the day. And I would think that for many users, these books added some value. But I have yet to see many books that really looks like they was used. And when I opened this book for the first time now, I don't think this has been used maybe one or once or twice during its lifetime. I hope you liked this uh, rather long and rambling video about uh, this book, 
or really this kind of book because books like this was the companion for almost every DOS computer back in the day and if you didn't get a book you probably had a clone computer that did not have an original version of MS-DOS because this type of book was really common and from some of the vendors they had this in binders and they also supplied technical manuals and basic manuals uh, but some kind of manual was with all these computers and even back when they started the Windows 3.11 area they had this uh, common book with both MS-DOS and Windows in the same book and even though in the late Windows 3.11 area this was actually optional you could choose to have buy your UM Windows and uh, DOS without uh, manuals but even back then it was most common to deliver this with your computer and this common source of, of knowledge was really my go-to source when I was learning about MS-DOS back in the day and I have read not this book but this kind of books yeah every page and I've read this book several times and I also used them as reference guides and also when I went to school and back in 1987 uh, when I was uh, learning about MS-DOS uh, in the school they actually used these books as learning guides we can see that there are some really really good information in here so this kind of book really bring back the nostalgic feelings about retro computers and DOS thanks for watching at least I hope someone is uh, still watching if you have some pointers and want to comment on the video quality, audio quality, or the video editing, or the topic of the video, please leave a comment. And I would be really happy if you hit the subscribe button, then you will be notified when I post new videos. Thank you and have a good day.